Bring me an old-fashioned, please. Yes, miss. And don't make it too old-fashioned. I understand, miss. Darling, I'm awfully sorry. But I got held up. Well, you wouldn't want me to come with blood on my clothes. How about some chicken soup? Two chicken soups. Honestly, I should have my head examined. The world is full of nice, normal men, and I become engaged to a crazy cop. Darling, I wish you wouldn't keep referring to me as a cop. I'm a grade-A detective. Homicide squad's a vastly different thing. Steak or fish? Fish. Fish. It's an impossible kind of a life to ask any woman to lead. I never know where you are or when. It isn't as if it paid anything to make it worthwhile. Oh, I wish you'd tell Captain McGovern that. And what if we do get married? What about the children? When they ask me, where's Papa? What am I going to say? Just say I slipped out for a minute. Oh, I do wish you'd be serious, Kenny. You have a good background. Chef salad? Yeah. A law school education. Certain amount of brains. Why didn't you pick something with a future? Something with a little more dignity. Yes, you're absolutely right, darling. I'll take it up with you the first thing in the morning. In the meantime, this is your evening, and I'm not going to let anything spoil it. Boiled onions? Yes. Yeah. Do you hear what I hear? No, it's only the wind. It is not. It's the police car after you. Kelly, go in there and get Williams. Tell him to get out here pronto. Lieutenant, there's been a murder uptown at the Marymount apartment. Oh, but listen, Joe, I just... The government says to get up there pronto. <sighs> listen, darling, order me a... Oh, never mind. At least we had some chicken soup together. They'll never be able to take that away from us. Bye. Two old fashions. Yes, miss. Hey, what's the idea? Mac, this is supposed to be my night off. You're a cop, Kenny, not a night owl. I was just having dinner with Maxine. Yeah, I know. And I suppose she was trying to get you to resign from the force again. Yeah, and she's absolutely right, too. What's she gonna tell the children? What's she gonna say when they ask, where's Papa? Darn if I know. Well, have a night. Hey, wait a minute. Aren't you coming? No. I just wanted to see that you got down here all right. They're giving me a big banquet downtown. Hello, boys. Well, well, if it isn't the genius himself. Don't look now, Bixler, but I think we've got company. Oh, you're here. Goody, goody. And what seems to be the trouble? Don't he ask the cleverest questions? A lady committed suicide. Maybe she found out you were coming. Who asked you to come up here anyhow? Captain McGovern. You must know him. We all work for him. He seemed to think that you boys might need a little expert help. Do you mind if I take a look at the corpse? Oh, no. Not at all. Ain't he morbid? And what gave you boys the idea it was suicide? The doors were all locked from the inside. We had to break in. The fingerprints on the knife were the same as those of the corpus delicti. In fact, she was holding the handle just like this when Richard Mortis said it. Your Latin stinks. We're on the 16th floor, Lieutenant. And even you can see there are no ledges, no fire escapes. Oh, you noticed that too? Yes. Where's Anderson? I sent him out to locate the children. What children? These children. Let me speak to Miss Maxine Carroll, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those aren't children, you dope. Those are midgets. Midgets? Certainly. The one on the right's old enough to be your father. Well, now, what would she be doing with midgets? I don't know. I've never been a midget. <laughs> Hello, darling. I'm sorry I had to leave you in such a hurry. I'll be over there again in about five minutes. Will you order me a steak, a nice, big, juicy sirloin? And some chiffon out salad. Uh-huh. Mashed potatoes, macaroni au gratin. Why, sure, I'll be over. I just said I would. Yeah. Sure, I just said I would. Listen, honey, cancel that order. I just got an idea. I'll grab a sandwich and see you the first thing in the morning. Good night, boys. Wait a minute. You're not going without giving us some of your expert advice. Well, boys, I'll tell you. I'll give you a clue. The lady was a snake charmer. I get it. And one of her snakes stabbed her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. Then the snake put on his hat, locked the door, went over the transom. Uh-uh. No transom. Anyway, he rang the elevator bell. The boy took him down. He got in a cab and went home to the zoo. Good night.
Did you ever hear such stupid nonsense? The guy's crazy. You're standing on my foot. And that's the guy they think is a genius. You're standing on my foot. Well, excuse me. The door was bolted from the inside, so we were forced to break in. The apartment, which is on the 16th floor, seemed in perfect order. There were absolutely no signs of a struggle. Every indication points to suicide. Good afternoon, students. I see you're all busy improving your minds. The woman was lying sprawled out on a rug near the fireplace. The woman was lying sprawled out on the rug. What are you doing, Bixler, writing your memoirs? I had a feeling things were too peaceful around here. What comes after suicide? Comma, period. I wouldn't put that through if I were you, Bixler. It was a plain case of murder. Murder? Yeah. You remember those snakes? Do I? Well, women don't usually keep snakes for pets, isn't that right? That's right. And they don't usually run around with midgets, isn't that right? That's right. So I immediately thought of a circus, isn't that right? That's right. Circuses employ strange people with unusual talents, isn't that right? You said it. So I saw the possibility of a murder, isn't that right? That's right. Say, who is this guy? Charlie McCarthy? No, no. No, he belonged to circus too, isn't that right? That's right. And I suppose you think it's murder, isn't that right? That's right. I know it's murder. Oh, you do? Yes. And what police college did you graduate from, may I ask? None. <laughs> Yet you think you can solve this case? Yes. Why? I am the man that killed her. Huh? Yeah. yeah. He's the man that killed her. He's a knife thrower. You see, he and the Vincent woman worked together in the same act for years. Isn't that right? That's right, senor and then she ran away with another man. So Ronaldo took the apartment across the court and bided his time. That's why there were no fingerprints on the knife. You see, gentlemen, I throw the knife like this. Hold uh, it. Uh, never mind that. There you are, Bixler, a signed confession. Take him away. I've got more important things to do. Hello, Maxine. Hello, honey. What's the idea of letting me sit alone in the restaurant? I had to pay my own check. What kind of a guy are you, anyway? Oh, listen, honey, don't get mad. You get wrinkles. Well, I couldn't help it about last night. Yeah, but listen, honey, tonight's going to be different. We'll go out and paint the town red, white, and blue. Uh huh. All right, baby. I'll be out at the apartment in about an hour. Well, it's pretty sweet of him to send me flowers. Guess I'll have to forgive him after all. Softy. The latest victim of the phantom slugger just died in the emergency hospital. The mayor's on the warpath, and I can't say that I blame him. So far, you fellas have gotten nowhere. Say, Chief, I got a theory. You have? What is it? Well, you see this guy? This guy never molests him. No, no, he just hits him over the head with a club. <laughs> Pipe down, Williams. Well, I was gonna say, this guy never molests him or robs him. So you know what I figure? What? He just don't like women. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's positively brilliant, Deaver. I'm sorry I can't stay to hear the rest of it. Where do you think you're going? I have to get a shave. Wait a minute. You wouldn't happen to have any ideas on how to catch the phantom slugger, would you? Why, sure. Dress this monkey up in women's clothes and send him out in the street as a decoy. What? Well, you could do it, Deaver. You're the prettiest cop in the force. Look at that waistline, Chief. Nice and slender. Those beautiful, big brown eyes just pour a pint of perfume over him and you'd be perfect. Cut out those rattle-brain ideas of yours. This is the police department, not the Follies. Well, you asked for it. There it is. Wait a minute. You seem to be anxious to go somewhere. Yes, sir. I'm through for the day. Oh, yeah? Come in my office. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Get out of the jail and pick up Texas Buck Mosby. You're taking him up to the big house tonight. Mac, be reasonable. I catch him. Let somebody else take him up. Your train leaves at 620, Union Station. 620? That's impossible. Well, I mean, 
I've got a date with Maxine tonight. Oh, that's a shame, Kenny. I didn't realize you'd made other plans. She's a lovely girl. You're telling me we're going to get married. Tonight? No, not tonight, but I'm taking her out to dinner at 6.30. Tell you what I'll do. At 6.30, I'll call her up myself, and I'll tell her you're having dinner with Texas Buck Mosby on the train. Mac, be reasonable. We I'll wear my pink dress tonight. The one with the full skirt. Don't put it on till you see the whites of his eyes. What? Every time Kenny sends you roses, you end up all dressed up, made up, and stood up. Hello? Hello, Maxine? Yes, dear. Well, uh, since I last talked to you, something... Kenny Williams, you're not trying to break our engagement tonight, are you? It's just a... Well, it's like this. I... Because if you do, it's all over between us. You understand that, don't you? Oh, sure. Well, <laughs> I really just called to see if you got those flowers I sent you. Yes, dear. They're perfectly lovely. I'll be expecting you tonight at 6.30, rain or shine. Goodbye. Goodbye. Williams. Hello, Buck. Hi, yeah, Lieutenant. Keep your eye on this boy. He has more ways of getting on and off trains than a mail sack. Yeah? Well, tell the taxpayers to relax. Buck owes the state 40 years, and we're going to collect every day of it. Let's go, fella. Where to? 421 West Avenue. It's just when they moved the station up there. We're not going to the station. I've got to stop off and see my girl. What about me? My stretch is supposed to start at half past six tonight. Yeah, well, it'll only take a few minutes. Say, do you realize how long a few minutes is going to be at the end of 40 years? I think you've got something there. Oh. <laughs> Say, Lieutenant, this is going to be sort of embarrassing to me, meeting a girl under these conditions. You're not even going to see her. You're going to stay right here. You mean you're going to leave me out here all alone? Sure. You can climb up and down that thing if you want to, but don't go too far away. Say, you can't do this to me. Why are you a congressman? Oh, Hello, darling, honey. darling, I knew you'd come. Yeah. Kenny, you're half hour early. Yeah, well, that's because I... I know, I know. Effie, Effie, get me my new hat, well, will listen, you? Listen, Maxine. Effie said you wouldn't turn up, but I knew better, didn't I? Yeah, but... Oh, we're gonna have a wonderful time tonight. It's just like old times, isn't it? Yeah. Get me my bag, too, Effie. Well, you see my new hat, you'll just adore it. Yeah, I bet I will. Oh, it's gonna be so much fun being with you tonight, Kenny. Yeah, but listen, honey. Here you are. Thank you, Effie. Oh, hello. Hello. Look. You like it? Yeah, it's swell. Oh, you don't really like it. Yes, I do. Really, I do. I bought it especially for the occasion. Yeah? Don't wait for us, Effie. We're going to be very late. Oh, wait a minute, honey. I've got to tell you something. Tell me in the cab. No, I have to tell you now. Oh, wait till we're alone. No, I can't because... Well, you see, I... Uh, I've got somebody outside. Who? A friend of mine. A guy I went to college with. Oh, what'd you bring him for? Well, I couldn't help it. You see, he, he doesn't get to town very often. And... Oh, don't be so selfish, Maxine. Let's have the poor man in. No, no, wait a minute. I, I'd better tell him. You see, he, uh, he's sort of shy with women. Hmm. He sounds just my type. You done already? Listen, Buck. I want you to do me a little favor. For what? I'm going to introduce you to a couple of ladies. And... Why don't you try to act like a gentleman? Well, what about the train? We can catch the 11.45. Now, wait a minute. I know my rights. I don't have to take any blind date. Listen, either you do this for me or I'll have the warden take away your Sunday baseball. Come on, take me to the station. Listen, Buck, you're making a big mistake. She's one of the most beautiful blondes you ever laid your eyes on. Blonde, huh? Yeah, stands about five foot six, about 125, 30 pounds, big blue eyes. Blue eyes? Yeah, you know, the soft, liquid kind. That's my weakness. That's what I thought. Well, what good am I in handcuffs? We can take those off if you promise to behave yourself. I'll try. Okay. Well, listen, Buck. Just as a reminder, I want to show you something. 
National Pistol Champion, Kenny Williams, 1939. Very pretty. Come on, where's the blonde? Mr. Buck, don't forget your name's not Buck Mosby tonight. It's Charlie Jones. Sure. Uh-huh. Maxine, honey, this is Charlie Jones. Pleased to meet you. Say, Kenny was wrong about you. You don't weigh no 130 pounds. Hey, Charlie. But he was sure right about those big blue eyes. Charlie, this is Effie. Oh, I get it. This is mine. Mm -hmm. Midby! Midby? <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Charlie's quite a card. Where do we intend to go for dinner? Well, I thought we'd just go around to Tony's. Oh, not in a night like this. Why don't we go out in the open where they got trees and bushes? Oh, now, Mr. Jones, no bushes. This is my evening and I want to go to the beach. Well, listen, honey, don't you think that... Boy, that's what I like, the wide open spaces. Why not? What's holding us up? Age before beauty. <laughs> Listen, Buck, don't forget that medal. I got a medal two once for the hundred yard dash. <laughs> Happy? Mm -hmm. Why do you look at me like that? I was just thinking, sugar, do you believe in long engagements? Oh. <laughs> Say, that friend of yours doesn't waste much time, does he? No, as a matter of fact, he hasn't got much time to waste. What does he do? Well, right now, honey, he's sort of connected with the law. Oh, that's the position you should be in. Remember, I'm not going to marry you as long as you're a policeman. Hey, Charlie. Well, what do you think you're doing? I'm gonna do some shooting. Yeah? What do you think I ought to shoot it, Kenny? I'd aim at those squirrels. Okay, but I can't always guarantee what I'll hit. Well, here, I'll show you. It's your turn. Yeah, let me try it. There you are, mister. There you are, Charlie. That may quiet your nerves. Wasn't it exciting? Yes. Looks like we're going to have a big evening. With you, Jonesy. You seem kind of nervous tonight, Kenny. Who, me? Mm-hmm. What was the idea of all that cowboy stuff at the shooting gallery? Oh, I just like to keep my hand in. Oh. Were you trying to impress me or Mr. Jones? No, no I just want to get Charlie a good cigar. Am I going to see you tomorrow, Charlie? Oh, I'm afraid I'm going to be tied up tomorrow, Effie. And the next day? Yep, and the day after that. I'm afraid you really don't like me, Charlie. Oh. I swear I'll never look at another woman as long as I live. Oh, Charlie. Hi, Buck. Hiya, Joe. I thought you were in the camp. You did? Huh. I could sue him for that. Did he say Buck? Oh, just a nickname. Oh. Hey, friend of yours? Yeah, a very good friend. There isn't anything he wouldn't do for me. I wouldn't ask a friend to do too much if I were you, Jonesy. How long have you known Mr. Jones? Jonesy? Mm-hmm. Oh, I must have known him for about 10 years. Really? Mind if I cut in? Mr. Jones, how long have you known Kenny? Oh, ever since we went to college. Wake up, Kenny. You're walking in my sleep. <laughs> it must be fun running into an old alumnus like this. Oh, go on. You ain't so old. Mr. Jones, just what is your alma mater? Listen, lady, let's cut out the double talk and get down to brass tacks, huh? Baby. Well, don't you think we've danced enough? Come on, let's get a drink. It's okay with me, Miss Carol. Will you share a glass of beer and a pretzel? You three go ahead. I'm going to powder my nose. Your nose looks all right to me. Whose nose isn't, anyway? Kenny, that gal of yours swings a mean line of pig Latin. What do you have, baby? Well, all I can say is it's the only time I've ever felt like a wallflower without a wall to lean on. Banana split. What do you have? I'm going to have my head examined. He'll have his head examined. Hello, Captain McGovern. Oh, do you know where Kenny Williams is? He had a date with me tonight. Oh, Miss Carroll, I'm awfully sorry. I promised Mr. Williams I'd call you up and tell you that he was having dinner with Texas Buck Mosby on the train. It must be wonderful to be a great big policeman and know everything like you do. 
Hey, what is this? Oh, nothing. Well, I just got through dancing with Texas Buck Mosby, and I'm going back and have another. You're crazy. Where are you? At the beach casino with Kenny Williams, having a wonderful time. It's that Carol Dan trying to pull my leg. She says Texas Buck Mosby and Williams are out at the casino dancing. <laughs> That's a hot one. <laughs> yeah, she just saw her because I put one over on her. <laughs> Say, Captain, the warden just called up from the prison and says Mosby and Williams haven't arrived yet. <coughs> what? Honest? Yeah. Hello, Miss Carroll. Can you hang on to him till I get out there? Hang on to him? Captain, I can't get rid of him. Call out the riot squad. I'm going to the beach casino. I got a date with Kenny Williams. How many dances does that make? Five. Don't you two want to go home yet? I wish I knew what he's got that I haven't got. Maxine. Say, you know, you're the swellest little wagon that ever came down my alley. What do you say we ditch the others and make a night of it? Oh, Charlie, I can't. I came with Lieutenant Williams. Well, so did I. You and Deaver go around the back. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. I'll sneak out and make a phone call. You meet me outside later. Charlie, you can't leave me Sorry, here. Sorry, lady, I can't wait. Come on, Cinderella. The ball is over. Hiya, Mac. Turn that man over to Lieutenant Bixler. You're under arrest. Ah, oh, this is getting monotonous. Well, Williams? Well, listen, Mac. That's enough. Hold it. Find dancing partner for these young ladies. Buck Mosby, notorious convict and killer. Take that girl outside in the fresh air. Hey, you. Come up here and get this music started. Go ahead with the dancing, folks. The trouble's all over. Put me down, please. Are you all right, Effie? Oh. Maxine, I don't know what to say. I... Kenny Williams, of all the shabby tricks you've ever played on me, this is the worst. Letting me dance with a common murderer. I'm so humiliated. And it's for Effie, you've lost her friendship for good. What friendship? Well, listen, Maxine. There's nothing more to say. Williams. Don't run away, honey. Well, Lieutenant, I hope you're proud of yourself. This is the first time since I've had charge of the department that I'll have to go to my superior and apologize for one of my men. Well, honestly, Max, Save I'm your sorry. breath. You're to report with me to the police commissioner the first thing tomorrow morning. Drive on, driver. Hey, Maxine. Thanks for a swell party, Kenny. I'll be seeing you in about 40 years. Mr. Mayor, this is shameful. This is an outrage. Mayor Johnson, it isn't safe for a woman to be on the street. Our wives and daughters are the mercy of the sea. Detective dances his man in the strikes again. Now, Captain McGovern will be here at any moment. He'll explain everything. Poor McGovern. I'd rather face a bargain sale in a barrel than go into that mob. Wonder what they're going to do to Kenny. They ought to give him the chair and put a tack on it. Hope they fire him for good. Oh, Captain McGovern. Yes? Aren't you going to thank me for last night? Well, if I thought it showed any civic interest, Miss Carroll, I might congratulate you. But I know why you called me up last night. You hoped that Williams would be fired. Isn't he going to be? No. I suspended him for 60 days without pay. You see, I'm more interested in making Kenny a good cop than a good husband. Hey, 
is, is he? Captain McGovern, this Citizens Committee have expressed themselves as having become dissatisfied with your department, particularly in regard to the Phantom Slugger case and this disgraceful exhibition last night. The time has come for a showdown. Have you or have you not some feasible plan to offer for the apprehension of this public menace to the womanhood of our town? Uh, Miss Carroll, be good enough to take notes. Proceed. I've been thinking of sending one of our men out on the streets at night uh, as a decoy, dressed as a, a woman. Well, that's the first sensible plan I've heard. Why hasn't this suggestion been offered before? Uh, the difficulty is in finding a good man willing to undertake the job. Most of my fellows had resigned before they'd parade the streets in women's clothes. <laughs> I can't see why. For some reason, madam, men still prefer to dress as men. You could hardly expect the average man to uh, take the ridicule and the humiliation he'd be put through. What you say is probably true, Captain. But this is a crisis that calls for heroic measures. If they won't volunteer, you've got to order someone to do it. Mm. You're right. That's That's right. right. That's right. That's right. Well? I don't think Lieutenant Williams would like the idea much. Like the idea? Well, who cares whether he likes it or not? Besides, he's been suspended for 60 days. I'll reinstate him at once, on condition that he accept this assignment. If he refuses, we'll dispense with his services for good. I'm sick of this favoritism, McGovern. Uh, Miss Carroll, send for Lieutenant Williams. With pleasure. Well, I think you're on, we're on the right track now, at least. Hello. Hello. Still mad at me? Mad? What have I got to be mad about? Mm -hmm. I think you're wonderful. You kidding? No, of course I'm not kidding. I've just realized what a dope I've been. Kenny, I've never really appreciated you before. But now I know what a fine policeman you are. And I, well. So what's the matter with you anyway? Nothing. Nothing at all. I guess I'm just a little emotional today. You see, they're all waiting for you in there to present you with a very high honor. Honor? Yes, a nice, big, juicy assignment that may lead anywhere. Oh, boy. Yes, Kenny, you're really going to be the flower of the force. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not going to do it, Mac. They can hang me, shoot me, or send me to the chair. I'll die before I'll appear like this in public. But it was your idea. Yeah, for Deaver. The first requirement of any good officer is never to ask a man to do something he wouldn't do himself. Okay. You try it. I'm a captain. You're only a lieutenant. Well, from now on, I'm not even that. What are you doing? I'm resigning right here and now. But don't you see, that's exactly what she wants you to do. She who? Maxine, this was her idea. Oh, it was, was it? Sure, she's the one that suggested you to the mayor. And when we nabbed you and Buck Mosby down at the beach, who do you think it was tipped us off? Maxine? Sure. Listen, Kenny, she don't want you to be a cop. She's saving you to push baby carriages around the park. She expects you to resign. Oh, she does, does she? Well, I'll show her. Pushing baby carriages isn't exactly in my line. Oh, I don't know. You look like you make a very good mother. May I make one suggestion? Ladies usually wear their garters inside their steps. <coughs> Outside of that, you look scrumptious. Excuse me. So you thought I'd resign, did you? Some men would. Well, it just happens that my pride goes a little bit farther than that. Well, I don't particularly like making a jackass out of myself. But it's for a good cause. I'd walk down Main Street in a Turkish towel before I'd let any woman control my life. All right. Go ahead. Make a fool out of yourself. See if I care. But I'll tell you one thing, Kenny Williams. If you go out in that get-up, I'm through. That suits me. And don't you dare send me roses. I'll send them right back. That suits me, too. I'll probably have to use them. Good grief, you look like my Aunt Nellie. What? Let me out of here.
Well, did he resign? Captain McGovern, when you die, why don't you leave your body to science? What for? I'd just like to know what cops use for a heart. <laughs> Well, are you ready? Yeah. Hey, do you smell something? Yeah, it's me. Down, please. To you, madam. Paging Mrs. Carraway. Mrs. Carraway. Paging Mrs. Carraway. Mrs. Carraway. Paging Mrs. Carraway. Here she comes. Paging Mrs. Carraway. Don't worry, Kennedy. You look perfect. From now on, you're on your own, and good luck. Good night, dear. Are you hurt? Hey, cutie, how about a date? Upsy daisy. Yeah. Oh, lady, are you strong? <laughs> hey, lady, do you know that that guy you spec is a detective? So what? Oh, nothing, nothing. I just thought I'd mention it. Yes. Yes. I don't want excuses. I want you to locate Williams. Well, he's been going 48 hours. Maybe run out on us. Couldn't stand the gap. No, no. Kenny wouldn't do that. Once he takes an assignment, he sticks. Say, Chief, that Carol girl's outside. What does she want? She says she's worried about Kenny. Wants to know where he is. Captain McGovern, tell me what's happened to Kenny. Oh, you're worried about him now, are you? I wasn't able to sleep a wink. Well, that's just too bad. I suppose you think Kenny does these things just for you to lose your sleep. No. No, I think he does it because he likes the excitement. Partly, but there's just a little more to it than that. It's a thing called duty, Miss Carroll, but you don't seem to understand much about it. Captain, you must tell me, where is he now? I don't know, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. You see, I don't think you're good enough for him. The woman that marries that man has got to take him for what he is, a good cop, not what she wants him to be. A call just came through. They've located Williams at the corner of 6th and Main. All right, all right.
Lieutenant Williams is here. Shall I let him in? No, tell him to wait just a minute, please. Effie, get my bed jacket, quick. I'll get me the temperature chart. Hurry. And a pencil. Zip. What's that? My temperature. Effie, I'm sick, very sick. In fact, I'm gonna die. Can you cry? Oh, I get it. Crank down the bed. I wish this thing could play music. Okay. Now you can call him in. Effie. Come in now, Kenny, but be very quiet. Maxine. Maxine, honey. Yes. Who is it? Are you all right, baby? Yes, dear. I'm all right. Maxine, honey, you shouldn't have followed me. I'll never forgive myself for what happened. Don't blame yourself, Kenny. I realize now that your life is my life. Wherever you go, I go. But, Maxine, you can't do that. It's an impossible life for a woman to lead. It's the life you've chosen, Kenny. Well, I don't have to keep at it. I can do something else. I can't let you make that sacrifice. What are you doing? I'm sending in my resignation. been killed at the First National Bank on Spring Street. Twenty-five grand taken out of the vault. Get going. The last one out's an old maid. Where's Williams? Nobody's seen him since his girl got hurt. He's never around when he's wanted. I'm gonna fire that guy, but it's the last thing I do. Note from Williams, Mike. Williams. Well, I... What is it? So he thinks he's gonna walk out on me, does he? With a bank murder on my hands. Not today he won't. You men go with Deaver. Oh, boys. Bixler, you and I are going to see that Williams doesn't resign. Have these signed and bring them back right away. Hello. Hello, Miss Carol. Effie, here it is, our marriage license. Well, that's something. Mm -hmm. And look, isn't it beautiful? Gee, it almost looks real. <laughs> Boy, $25,000 bank robbery. That's a lot of dollars. Oh, but you aren't interested in that sort of thing anymore, are you, Kenny? Huh? Oh, <laughs> no, no, I'm not interested in that kind of thing anymore. Say, Abby, will you call the mayor? We thought we'd like to have him marry us. Oh, he's going to be tied up until about 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock? Well, we got a couple hours to kill. Effie, as long as you're taking over my job, I'll show you where things are. All right. And honey, you make yourself at home. Uh huh. Over here is all the correspondence from the Board of Education. And down here is the mayor's personal mail. On this side, the reports from the city planning board. Yeah. I keep all the unanswered correspondence in here. Uh, <clears throat> listen, honey, I, I think I will go over and turn in my shield and pin up my locker. Hello, Bixler. Oh, hello, Williams. What's the idea of the fishing rod? To catch fish. Say, what are you doing up here anyway? I thought you resigned. Yeah, I just came up turning my bed. <laughs> you and me both. What do you mean? I'm resigning too. 
You're resigning. What for? Well, he can insult me up here if he wants to, but not before any bank president. So I'm quitting. Now, what are you talking about? You see, Kenny, this, this bank murder is a, is a marvelous case. There isn't a clue within a mile. It's one of those cases that happen once a year. And there I am, getting all hot with ideas. So he calls me a fathead in front of the president. <laughs> I'm through. <laughs> so it's a tough case, huh? Oh, it's a Lulu. And the phone's ringing. Yeah, I hear it. Aren't you going to answer it? Nope. Now, listen, you better answer it. Why? I've resigned. We're not working here anymore, are we, kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Listen, maybe somebody's in trouble. Yeah, maybe somebody is in trouble. Do you think we ought to answer it? Okay, let's answer it. I'll get it. Oh, Homicide Bureau. Yeah, who's talking? McGovern. Oh, hang up on him, Kenny. Show the old monkey what you Wait think of him. Minute. Wait a minute. What'd you say, Mac? Um, well, I'll look around and see if he's here. He wants you. Well, tell him I don't want to talk to him. Wait a minute, I'll tell him myself. Will you get out? Hello, Mac. Huh? Well, I don't know. I'll see what I can do. He's pretty sore. Huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Can you beat that? McGovern, sorry he blew up. He wants me to bring you over to the bank so he can apologize. Not me. I'll bop him right in the nose. Can I depend on that? You know my temper. Listen, I can't miss this. I got a couple hours to kill. I'll take you over there. No. Ah, oh, listen, Bixler. Come on. Don't be stubborn. It isn't every day in the week you get a chance to make McGovern crawl. Well, all right. <laughs> but no work. No, we don't work here anymore. Boy, this will be fun. I hope. Is this the street cleaning department? Hello, Jean. This is Effie. Oh, Effie Perkins in the mayor's office. Listen, honey, Maxine's getting married to Kenny Williams at 12 o'clock, and we want you to come to the wedding. Effie! Tell Muriel and Waterworks. Oh. And uh, I'll try to get hold of Gladys and Garbage Disposal. Oh, put that yeah. phone down. And Jean, tell everybody to bring some nice little presents. Oh. It's a surprise. All right, honey, oh. goodbye. Effie, what'd you do that for? Why not, I'd like to know. Goodness knows you're always buying presents for their birthdays and things. What are you doing, Mac? Praying for guidance? No cracks. You've resigned. Listen, you wanted to apologize to this monkey. Here he is. Yeah, here I am. I'll apologize to you in a couple of minutes. I'm busy right now. Stick around and learn something. <laughs> you see? Hey, wait a minute, Bixler. Stick around. Watch the old man trying to use his own brains for a change. Save those drillings. Get out your notebook. OK. <laughs> so he's impressive, ain't he? Yeah. yeah. Especially when you don't have to work for him. Miller, the night watchman, was found with two bullets in him lying on the floor. His gun showed one empty shell. The bandits, two or more of them, evidently tied him up, left him here, and went to work on the vault. The watchman worked one hand loose, drew his gun, and fired a shot at them. <laughs> Shh, don't laugh out loud. What are you two clowns laughing at? Imagine leaving a gun on the watchman, even if he was tied up. Oh. Getting smart, aren't you, now that you're off of the job? No, no, he's right, Mac. They must have taken his gun away, but... There was another gun in the drawer. The watchman knew that. He worked his hand loose, all right, and pulled open the drawer. Ah. Now, let's see. The bandits were working at the vault. The watchman took a shot at him through this glass partition. Then he tried to duck through that door, but they got him. Come on. Come here. If the watchman had fired from here through the partition, the broken glass would have been on the other side. Take a look. So the bandit must have fired from there through the partition. There it is. Five will get you 50 if that bullet didn't come from the watchman's gun. It's a cinch. They'd only left a tool, a glove, or something. Yeah, or their address or telephone number. Besides, there was only one, Mac. A big fella, strong and quick. 
How do you know? Well, if there'd been more than one, they wouldn't have left the watchman unguarded. No, no. He broke into the bank, overpowered the watchman, tied him up in the office here, took his gun away from him, and then he went to work on the vault. In the meantime, the watchman got another gun out of this drawer and fired at him through the open door. He missed, and that was just too bad, because then the bandit fired at him through the partition. Well, now you've gone and spoiled it. Why are you cracking the case for him? Because I don't like bank robbers that kill night watchmen. How'd he get in? From the alley. Let's take a look. What'd you find out here, man? Here's a tire print that wasn't made by my car. So you made a cast of it? Yeah. Yeah, anything else? Where's that book? Oh, that's nothing. Just a paint book some kid threw away. And kids don't usually throw away unfinished paint books. <laughs> Look, Peter Rabbit with a beard. <laughs> and Cinderella with a beard. <laughs> and Snow White with a beard. Where'd you find this book, man? Out here in the tracks. You may have been smart enough to remember this old gag. How's that? Say, that must have fallen off when he made his getaway. Hop in, Bixler. Say, where do you mugs think you're going? I'm going down to the Board of Education. Try to get you in kindergarten. No, you don't. Not in my car. Sue me. <laughs> <laughs> Sonny. Hello. Gee whiz, why do you put whiskers on all the little girls? I put whiskers on everybody. You do? Why? Because I do whiskers so good. <laughs> Look, did you ever see this before? Why, sure, that's my paint book. Where'd you find it? Where'd you lose it? Home last night. You did? Tell me about it. I was painting in it when Pop came in and said, Mrs. Mishy and I could go to the movies. Oh, did you go? Why, sure. <laughs> well, listen, when you got home, did you ask your daddy about it? No, he'd went out. Gone out. Yeah, gone and went out. <laughs> Where do you live, Sonny? 122 Maple Street. 122 Maple. Police officer Stanley, I want to ask you a couple of questions. Okay. Is that your car? Yes. You're a loser, aren't you, Stanley? According to the records, you did a year for burglary in 1930. Where were you last night? Nowhere. Just went out for a little ride. Hey, Kenny, take a look. Well, there's the torch. And a pair of gloves, half burned. And an empty whiskey bottle. You've been doing a little drinking, huh? No, not a drop. I haven't broken my parole in any way. All right, Bixler, mark those exhibits for evidence. OK. Where's the money? I haven't got it. Quit stalling. You broke into the First National and murdered the watchman. I didn't. I swear I didn't. And the tire prints check, too. Okay, let's have the story. Well, well, what's all this? 
Oh, I hope you don't mind. Effie and I thought it'd be kind of nice to have some friends in. Oh, of course I don't mind, but isn't he a little late? Uh, hello, Maxine. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, where's the lucky man? Yes, where is the lucky man? Oh, he'll be here in a minute. Thank you. There he is now. Always clowning. Is this the mayor's office? Yes. Right after the boy went to the movies, a man rang my doorbell. He told me one of the clerks was trapped in the vault at the bank and would I bring my torch quick. It was a matter of life and death. Yeah, go on. We hurried down here for the car. He must have picked up Johnny's paint book and put it across the license place while I was getting the torch. We got to the bank. The watchman was all tied up and lying on the floor. The man shoved a gun in my back and told me to get to work at the vault. Well, I was working at the vault like this. The watchman was tied up in the office. He must have gotten an arm loose and grabbed a pistol out of the drawer. He fired at us. And the man behind me fired back across my shoulder, using me as a shield. He, he fired three times. Well, that was the end of the watchman. What did this mysterious midnight visitor of yours look like? It was so dark and I was so excited that I can't very well describe him. Don't you believe I'm telling the truth? That's for the judge and jury to decide. We only work here. Come on. Any sign of him, Effie? No, not yet. Well, I'm awfully sorry, but I'm afraid I have to go. So do I. Well, that's too bad. Bye. Oh, I feel so sorry for Maxine. May I take back my present? Sure, it'll never be missed. Well, come on, girls. Let's all have another piece of cake or something. I'm sure he'll be here in a minute. Come on, come on. <laughs> Must be embarrassing for poor Maxine to have to wait so long for the man she's going to marry. Say, listen, dearie. There's nothing to the wait you're going to have. Is he here? No. Did you call the department? Yes. He left his shield, but they don't know where he went. Well, if he doesn't come pretty soon, Maxine, I'm afraid I'll have to... I know. You've been awfully patient. Well, I guess there's nothing else to do but go out and apologize. I don't know what's happened to Kenny. Guess he got held up somewhere. I realize you all have to get back to your work. Thanks for coming. Bye, Bye man. Bye. 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 Dumped it, I. Well, here's the best man. Better late than never. Says who? Mr. Mayor, you'd have been proud of my department if you could have seen the way Kenny Williams dived into that case and started to put the darn thing together. I tell you, the fellow's a genius. He knows sooner than... What case? The first national bank robbery. He's got that case sewed up tighter than a drum. So he went back? Sure. Soon as he got his nose on the trail, you couldn't see him for dust. All right, Mac. You win. I lose. Oh, cheer up. He'll be here soon. That's just not soon enough. Oh, don't take it that way, Max. Come inside, McGovern. Effie. I'm sorry, but you're going to have to put these back where they were. What do you mean? You're still my assistant. And I'm still the mayor's secretary. Gee, that's all right with me. Your Honor, would you like copies of the Finance Commissioner's report? Why, yes, but uh, I thought you were leaving. So did I. Guess it's a joke on both of us. Sorry, Kenny, I'm afraid we can't laugh this one off. Oh, listen, Maxine, if it hadn't been one of the most interesting cases sure, I've ever... Sure, they're all interesting. And this one was a pip. Only I had the darn fool notion that two people getting married ought to feel it something that happens once in their lives. And police cases come a dime a dozen. But, of course, if it's as interesting as you say it was. Where are you going? 
I still work here, Kenny, and you still work over there. Well, listen, honey, I'm really sorry. Sure you are. You're always sorry. It's not your fault. You try, I guess. You've just become a little tin soldier that McGovern winds up and off you go. Well, keep going. I don't want it that way. You don't really need me. You're married to the department, and I wouldn't break that up for worlds. Here's a marriage license. Make it legal. Cross my name off and put his in. I hope you'll both be very, very happy. Come on, Kenny. Let's go. Congratulations. I hope all your kids have flat feet. You feel pretty proud of yourself, don't you? Not particularly. You'll probably be a big shot someday. No matter how far you stick your chest out, there's one little fellow that'll always have your number. My kid. You're not fooling him. Leave the kid out of it. You should have thought of him in the first place. If there's anything I can do for him, I... He wouldn't take favors from you. For as long as he lives, he'll always know you as a swell-headed cop that'd rather send an innocent man to the chair than admit he was wrong. You've taken the sweetness out of his heart and filled it with hate. Where does a kid go from there? Tell me! Where does a kid go from there? I'm sorry. I blew up. That's all right. It was the kid more than anything else. Yeah, I know. Hey, get me one of my cigarettes, will you? Sure. So were you wearing this coat the night of the robbery? Yes. Holy mackerel. Why, what's the matter? You see that faint line across there where the nap is burnt? Yes. That's a powder burn. That line was made by a bullet. As if someone had shot across your shoulder from behind. Well, that's what I told you. Yeah, I know. But my job is to believe what I see, not what I hear. So can't you remember what the guy looked like? Don't you remember anything about him? It's just as I said. I, I was so excited. I, I can't remember. I, I can't remember. Say, Stanley, were you on the level when you said you didn't drink? Yes. Then that whiskey bottle we found in the back of the car didn't belong to you. No, it didn't. That's the only lead we've got. Come on. Why? Where are we going? We're getting off at the next stop. Brother, it was a lucky day for you when you ran into me. Oh. I'm lucky now, am I? Hello, Kenny. Where are you? Um, well, never mind that, but listen, I get off the train. I've decided not to deliver Stanley. <coughs> what? Well, listen, Mac, I'm convinced we've got the wrong guy. Stanley never pulled that job. Why, you... Say, listen, you pig-headed jackass. Nothing but a wild hunch to go on and that guy sentenced to burn? The court says he's guilty. You can't refuse to deliver him on your own authority. I know, I know, Mac. It's not legal, but in this case, it's justice. Listen, Williams, you deliver that guy up here in five minutes or I'll break you for life. Where are you? Okay, Mac, if you want it that way, come and find me. You're a good detective. What's up, Chief? Boys, it's Williams again. He skipped the train with Stanley. Well, well, he's crazy. Sure. You think he's trying to pull another Buck Mosby? I don't know what he's trying to do. Anderson, you go to Kenny's home. Jameson, you and Riley go to Stanley's place. Mixler, you and Deaver come with me. Right. Yeah, but don't anybody go to the beach casino? Come on. Somebody's at the door. Uh, Wonder who it is. Oh, I suppose my sister had another baby. I want you fellas to search this place thoroughly. Just because there are a couple of women, don't get soft. Well, I. Oh! 
None of that, young lady. You two fellas look around in here while I search the bedroom. What are you doing here? Looking for Kenny Williams. Williams? Williams? Never heard of him. Yeah. Quit stalling. Where is he? I haven't seen Mr. Williams since he left me waiting at the typewriter. I gave him to you. Remember? Sister, you can have him back at bargain prices. Don't tell me you two kiddies had a fight or something. No. He only defied me and the whole police department, that's all. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? That's rich. Even you can't hold him. <laughs> well, it's not so funny this time. He goes to jail for ten years when we get hold of him. That's fine. Let me know the number of his cell, will you? I'd like to send him some old adventure magazines. Yes, and he'll need them. No sermon, Chief. Bixler, you stand guard outside and nab him if he turns up. Deaver, tap the telephone wire in the basement in case he calls in from the outside. Yes, sir. I'm going back to the office. If he shows up, let me know. Okay, Chief. Gee, ten years in the clink for Kenny. You can't laugh that off. Well, whatever it is, Mr. Williams can take care of himself, as I remember. But this is serious, Maxine. Oh, Effie, quit worrying. I've got a busy day tomorrow. Got to get my sleep. I have some change, please. Maxine, this is Kenny. Listen, I'm in a terrible jam. That's not news. Your boyfriends have been draped around here all night. Well, listen, honey, you've got to help me. I'm at the drugstore down on the corner. And I've got to see you. Well, I can't come up there, so you'll have to come down here. I'm sorry. I've got to get dressed and go to work. Well, stop on your way down. I'll wait here for 30 minutes. Please. Kenny just called the Carroll girl. He told her to meet him at the corner drugstore in half an hour. That's fine. Get down there and pick him up. You better take Bixler with you. He might put up a fight. I'll be right over. What's the idea? Did you see a guy in a light suit with a little mustache? Well, yeah, he was just in here using the phone. Said he was coming back in 20 minutes to meet some girl. He's wanted for the police. Mm -hmm. Can you fix stuff in the back room so we can keep a lookout? Well, all right. But don't break anything. the same old incredible Mr. Williams. You still don't keep appointments, do you? I had a date with you at the drugstore. I knew your telephone was tapped. That's why I called you. I wanted to get them away from here. Well, well, well. Still the bright boy of the department. Oh, please, honey, don't joke about this. It's important. I need your help. Sorry, Kenny. My helping days are over. Oh, for old times' sake. What do you mean? Chicken soup? Buck Mosby? Or waiting at the church? Oh, listen, darling, this isn't for me. It means life or death for an innocent man. You know, the Stanley case. The guy's innocent. I've got to prove it. But there's only one clue that might lead me to the guilty man. A whiskey bottle. I've got to get that bottle. Yeah? All liquor bottles have a registered number. Through that, I can find the retailer and cover the neighborhood. Then there's a bare possibility that I might find the guilty man. But the bottle's locked away in the files. You're the only person who can get it for me. Listen, Maxine, I've got Stanley hidden away. I'm working against time. 
If I don't clear him, I may go up for 10 years myself. I'm not concerned about that, but I'm not going to let an innocent man take the rap. Gee, my, my conscience can't take it. You are in trouble, aren't you? Well, that's what I'm telling you. Something tells me I'm about to make a dope of myself again. Oh, thanks, honey. Now, just a minute, Kenny. Let's understand this. I don't want you to go to jail because I have a conscience, too. I'll get you this bottle. But remember one thing. I don't go with the bottle. Effie, Effie. Get Kenny some breakfast and get it fast. For who? Kenny. Who? Kenny. Well, where is he? Uh, well, Chief, he left where he'll be back here in 20 minutes to meet his girl. All right, I'll stay here with Deaver. You go up the apartment in case anything has gone wrong. I'm taking no chance. Okay. What's the matter? Nothing. That you, Maxine? Shh. Wait a minute. Oh. Oh. Again. All right, Kenny. Get him up. Well, congratulations, Big Slip. I'm beginning to see the first great dawn of intelligence. How'd you happen to think of coming up here when I said I was going to be down there? No, I don't know. I just happened to think quicker than you did, that's all. It's amazing. Where's Stanley? Yeah, wouldn't you like to know? We'll find out. Oh, boy, are we going to have fun down there at the department. All right, let's go. Get my hat, Effie. I don't know why I'm feeling so darn bad. I guess it's just because I'm used to seeing you around. Thanks, Effie. All right, let's go. Oh, Lieutenant Bixler. Well, you don't mean to say you really got him. Well, it looks like it. Let me be the first to congratulate you. He's been pestering the life out of Effie and me. We didn't turn him in for old time's sake, but now he's off my conscience for good. Hmm. Just a little eye-opener. Say, when you finish at the department tonight, why don't you come up? Thanks. I think I will. Well? Effie! They've got Kenny. I know, I was here. They're gonna put him in jail for 10 years. You remember I told you that last night? But you didn't seem to care. Care? If they put him in jail for one day, I'd lose my mind. I love that guy. Oh, he looks so beautiful and so sad with those handcuffs on. I thought so. You've been drinking. I gotta find the guy who drank this liquor. Sure, sure. How about a little nap first? Kenny said if he could find the man who purchased this bottle, he'd have the guilty one. Now, I'm the only one left to do it. C-448641. You're crazy. What do you know about being a detective? Everything. Watch me. Good grief. She's caught it from him. It's worse than the measles. You know, I've always liked Maxine. i got to hurry back and have that drink with her. Listen, fix them. I'm pretty well known in this street. Why don't you take these things off? Yeah, and let you duck away from me? Oh, nothing doing. Oh, ho, ho. Now, wait a minute, Williams. I want to get some cigarettes. 
Oh, well, all right. Hello, Lieutenant. Hello, Joe. Give me some cigarettes. Pretty tough-looking customer. What are you pinching him for? You tell him, Lieutenant. Believe it or not, he's pinching me. <laughs> Always having a little joke, aren't you, Lieutenant? Yes. <laughs> he's terrific, isn't he? Come on. Hey, go easy. Hello, Lieutenant. Who's the mug? Well, just a clock who was stepping on flower beds and kicking the kids around. <laughs> See, you got another one, eh, Lieutenant? <laughs> That's a laugh. Every one of them thinks I'm under arrest. That's right. <laughs> I was just thinking the same thing. What do you mean you were just thinking the same thing? But everybody thinks you're under arrest. Well, uh, come on, step on it. <laughs> he looks tough, Kenny. As a matter of fact, everybody thinks you're under arrest except you. Well, what's so funny about that? Well, if there was any trouble, they'd all help me. There isn't going to be any trouble. Come on. Hey, what do you think you're trying to do? You're hey, trying to get away, huh? Shut up. None Shut of up. your lip there, big fellow. I'll take a poke at you. Oh, 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 oh. What do I think you want to go back? Don't get me now. Oh. It's all right there. Stand back, everybody. I got him. What happened, Kenny? He tried to get away. Oh. Who is he? Now keep an eye on him, will you, when I get the wagon? Okay, Kenny. And by the way, folks, don't get too close to him, because when he comes to, he's going to be awful mad. Jack Halsey, 643 Hope Street. H. Dixon, 212 Curtis Street. Regan, 527 Garfield Street. Now, are you sure these are all the people that bought that whiskey? Mm, yes, it's a very high-proof liquor. We don't get much call for it. Thank you very much. I tell you, Chief, the whole neighborhood's in cahoots with them. The last thing I remember, 20 people were coming at me. I fought like a tiger until they knocked me out. Now, let me get this straight. You went up to the apartment and got him. And the Carroll girl, what did she say when you took him? She wasn't there. She got out of the elevator when I was taking Kenny out. She was glad I had him. Hey, Cap, that dame drinks in the morning. She had a bottle under her arm. She even invited me in to have a snort. Carol drinking in the morning, bottle. Why, oh, you fathead, does it occur to you that one of the main pieces of evidence in the Stanley case was a whiskey bottle? That girl's in with him. She got the bottle for him. Yes, sir? Get me that bottle in the Stanley case. If it's not there, I want the number. Yes, sir. And I'll lay a ten to one, it's not there. We'll trail that whiskey bottle, catch up with Williams and the girl, and before I'm through, I'll have them both in jail. Oh, sure. Who are you looking for? Mrs. Regan. Is she at home? No. Are you a friend of hers? Well, yes, sir. I was supposed to meet her here. You the landlady? Yes. Would you mind if I wait upstairs for her? Not at all. But you'll have to let yourself in. I ain't going to climb them stairs again, not for nobody. That's the key. Thank you. You're in there, I can hear you. What are you doing? Searching my keys. How's Joe? Fine. I thought he was dying. Oh. I'm going to have me a little drink before we go. What are you doing in there, Kitty? Who wants to know? Oh, so you've been drinking again, huh? 
Say, listen, every time you come here, you act as though you own the joint and everything in it. Are we going to the races or aren't we? Why, sure, I've been waiting for you. You've been waiting for me. I've been waiting for you. Well, all right. Well, all right. Well, all right. This is a fine time of day to be brushing your teeth. Danny. Oh, oh, oh. What do you mean by scaring me like this? <laughs> Wait a minute. Let me wipe off your chin. Oh, honey. Were you really scared stiff? No. How'd you get out of there? There was a leak in Bixler's handcuffs. It was awful cute of you to leave the bottle up in the apartment so I could follow you. You didn't need to follow me. I'm doing all right. Yeah, what'd you find out? Well, I was just getting started when you came crashing through that window. Detectives would stop doing that sort of thing a long time ago. Why didn't you come through the door like I did? Well, well, you're getting pretty smart. Smart enough to know that the girl who lives here weighs 110 pounds, she's five feet four inches tall, and she's about uh, <coughs> 28 years old. You didn't happen to see her, did you? No, just instinct. Look. Yeah, what about it? What about it? A mink coat worth $2,000 if it's worth a nickel. People living here couldn't afford a coat like this unless they, they stole it or, or robbed a bank or something. Say, you are getting to be pretty smart. The first thing you know, you'll be a detective. Yeah, detective enough to know we've got to get the racetrack if we're going to catch these people. Where? The racetrack. You know where that horse is? Hey, wait a minute. How'd you happen to say racetrack? Uh, instinct. Uh, you didn't happen to see these, did you? What are they? Those are $50 paramutual tickets. There's 1,000 bucks bet on one race. And my guess is that dough like that only comes from a bank. Pardon me, that's my guess. Let's get going. Hey, listen, there must be 30,000 people out of that racetrack right now. My, what a crowd. And I suppose you're going in looking for a girl weighing about 110 pounds and five feet four. That's right. How, by instinct? Uh-huh. Listen, you saw this dame. Well, just a peek. Was there a man with her? Yes, but I didn't see him. But I could pick her out anywhere. Come on, Mr. Williams, you're holding me up. Ten fifty dollar tickets on number seven, please. Sure? Positive. Oh, Kenny, go on and grab her. I don't want her. Wait till she gets the man. We'll get them both. Oh, Kenny, don't let her get away. Hold on. Wait a minute. All right, son, you're under arrest. Tim Mac, don't stop me now. I'm right on his tail. Yeah, and I'm right on yours. Make sure to put the cuffs on him. This will be a pleasure. Wait a minute. Listen, Mac, that's the man on the Stanley case right there. I think he is the man, Mac. I'm going to arrest him. If he tries to make a break, then I'll know he's the man. Yeah, and let you make another getaway? Honest, Mac, we traced him through the whiskey bottle. We know we're right. Where do you get this wee stuff? She's done a terrific job, Mac. Don't stop us now. At least let me go in there and grab him. Then I'll find out if I'm right or wrong. All right, Kenny. And if he's not your man, you're mine. Okay. Wait a minute. You clear out of this. Clear out nothing. I started this and I'll finish it. I'm a special deputy on this job. All right, sister. And if you're right, I'll make you permanent special deputy. I'll hold you to that, Chief. Now listen, Paul, I'd like to ask you a few questions about that First National Bank job.
Well, he's done for. Don't worry, Maxine. He's not badly hurt. Hurt? Oh, Kenny. Go away. Would you care, honey? Oh, Kenny. Go away. <laughs> Mac, take her away. Nice work, baby. There you are. That's all for tonight. Thank you. Good night, sir. Good night. Mrs. Williams. Did I neglect in the excitement of the day to tell you that I'm the luckiest man in the world? Yeah, Kenny, I think you did. Listen, honey, will you put that thing away? You've been playing with it all night. Oh, gee whiz, this makes all the difference in the world, doesn't it? It gets in your blood. I know now a lot of things I didn't understand before. Oh, baby, the world's full of police badges. Kenny Williams. No, pet, no, sir. That's not for me. McGovern promised not tonight. There. That's that. Yes, that's... That. Want some champagne, Kenny? No, no, I don't like champagne. Well? Well... I'll tell him. No, wait a minute, Kenny, I'll handle this. You tell McGovern that Kenny Williams is not going on any assignment tonight. I don't care if somebody stole the Empire State Building. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mrs. Williams. This isn't for Kenny. It's for you. McGovern wants all special deputies in his office in five minutes. Special deputy? Me? Oh, I bet uh, that's right exciting. What is this anymore? Maxine, What's where are you going? Me? Don't be absurd. Don't wait up for me, darling. Hey, Maxine, you can't do this to me. <laughs> Maxine, I tell you, this is murder. <laughs> 